November 8th, 2016. The last presidential race was controversial, unconventional, and closely followed by millions of people as the future of the country was called into question. Media attention was high, voter turnout was low, and Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were two of the most problematic and controversial candidates that many of us had seen in our lifetimes. However, it wasn't just their political views and various scandals that caused this discrepancy of public opinion. In this video, I'm going to be exclusively examining the candidates' body language throughout the election and explaining how each of their nonverbal cues contributed to both their charisma and controversy. Nonverbal cues is a pretty ambiguous concept, so let's start off by figuring out what it actually is and how it can psychologically influence our perceptions of politicians. The term nonverbal communication refers to the wordless expression of meaning through the use of visual cues, body language, and any verbal element beyond the words themselves. A 2009 study published in the Journal of Broadcasting and Electronic Media examined how politicians on TV effectively emitted nonverbal cues. The study found that public perception of politicians' character traits and personalities correlate with exposure to the media portrayals of their nonverbal communication. Basically, we have a limited ability to process information about political candidates because our interactions with them are one-sided and typically restricted to a TV screen. As a result, we tend to form quick, emotion-driven impressions based primarily on their visual and nonverbal behavior. Okay, so now that we have a working understanding of nonverbal communication, we're going to compare Trump and Clinton's nonverbal cues by breaking them down into two categories, hand gestures and body movement. From there, we'll evaluate how some of these signals were effective in winning over voters, whereas others merely created dissonance within audiences. We've all seen more than enough media coverage of Trump's hands, so we're going to mix it up by starting off with Clinton. Her body language was very deliberate. As a former first lady, it's not surprising that she had extensive training and experience in public speaking. Her arms and hands typically remained at her sides while she spoke, which helped her to come across as professional and composed. However, there was a downside to her lack of expressiveness. We commonly associate elaborate hand gestures with passion. So although Clinton's minimal movement was deliberate, she was unwittingly inhibiting herself from physically expressing the passion behind her words. Trump didn't have the background in politics and public speaking that Clinton did, and his hand gestures strongly reflected this. He is notorious for his hand movements. Two of his most common ones involved spreading his arms wide and bringing them back into his body repeatedly and putting his hands up with his palms facing out. When he spread his arms in what is dubbed by professional body language experts as a basketball steeple, Trump was communicating his confidence, authority, and power. When he brought his hands back in with a gesture akin to the clashing of symbols, it was interpreted as a sign of creativity and thinking outside the box. The motion of placing one's hands in the air with palms facing straight out is perceived as a cautionary gesture. When he did this, he was making the audience aware of a danger, a danger that he then proceeded to provide a verbal solution for. These gestures are actually very effective in winning over an audience, but not all of Trump's hand gestures were received so positively. He had a habit of pointing at people, specifically audience members and reporters who questioned his decisions. This act of pointing attacks the person being addressed and gives off a clear impression of a lack of respect. Through our examination of both candidates' hand gestures, we can conclude that while Clinton was poised and experienced, her lack of hand movement hindered her ability to express passion. Trump, on the other hand, had no problem with expressive gestures, but some of his hand movements came across as too aggressive and accusatory. Who knew we could learn so much about someone from just their hands, right? But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's move on to their overall body language. A 2010 research paper published in the Science Direct Journal of Research and Personality conducted a series of studies on nonverbal cues by programming animated stick figures to mimic politicians' body movements. That study found that minor differences in the stick figure's body gestures resulted in different perceptions of their charisma and emotional intelligence. Overall, smoother body movements tended to be associated with higher emotional stability, as did smoother, more contained head movement. Clinton was often seen angling her head at a slight tilt when asked questions in debates or interviews. Whether it was conscious or not, this small movement actually worked in her favor. In instances where her ethics or authority was questioned, she had a tendency to raise her head high in a demonstration of superiority and confidence, which subsequently reinforced her ethos. As much as Trump's hand gestures helped him win over voters, his body language was less well-received and ultimately hurt his image in a few drastic ways. 
In many debates and interviews, he could be seen turning his shoulder to the audience and rotating his whole body towards the other candidate or interviewer. This showed a lack of fear and intimidation in a manner that gave off the impression of a challenge, not a trait we tend to look for in a diplomatic role such as the presidency. Of course, there was a plethora of factors that affected America's impression of the presidential candidates, and nonverbal cues were just one of them. Nevertheless, it is crucial to be aware of these cues, because oftentimes one's character and intentions can be more accurately determined through the examination of their body language than could ever be revealed through their words alone. Alright, so we've now extensively explored this concept of nonverbal expression. Let's quickly recap everything we went through today. We started off by delving into the psychology of nonverbal cues and how they can affect how we think and feel about other people. Next, we compared the two candidates' hand gestures, concluding that Clinton's lack of movement hindered her ability to express passion, whereas Trump's natural energy helped establish his image of authority, until he started pointing fingers, that is. From there, we moved to whole body movement, looking at how Clinton's head tilt helped establish her ethos, while Trump's challenging stance was perceived as dissonant and aggressive. Unfortunately, there is no concrete evidence of the degree to which Trump and Clinton's nonverbal cues influenced the results of the election. However, next term's primaries will air on TV in February 2020. When they do, remember to keep in mind that it's not just about what the candidates are saying, it's how they are saying it.